Well, um, we are going to go ahead and get it started with our first session uh, of the day. Uh, this session is um, Beyond the Margins, enhancing, enhancing Doctoral Education with Collaborative Social Annotation. Um, joining us today is Dr. Ashley Love. She is the Director of um, the Graduate uh, Studies at the Dreven School of uh, Education at the University of the Incarnate Word. And she is joined with several of her graduate students. Um, right before I turn it over to her, I did want to say that throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, please go ahead and put those through chat or the Q&A. We'll be monitoring that throughout the session, whether it's questions about our presentation or questions about hypothesis or social annotation. Um, please go ahead and put those in and, and we will um, be monitoring that. So um, Dr. Love, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the introduction. We are very excited to present on our experiences using the hypothesis. So in this session, uh, we're going to go through some introduction, uh, the history of how we incorporated hypothesis into our program and our courses, and we'll have point of views from um, the instructional designer point of view, um, faculty perspective, as well as uh, the student's perspective. Uh, hopefully by the end of our presentation, uh, we can showcase how hypotheses uh, can be actively used by the students and faculty. And um, we can show you some real world classroom implementation from multiple perspectives. So, I'm sure that all of us are struggling to engage our students. And when we look at some of the statistics, um, we see that students in undergrad, 55% of the students are struggling and 38% of our graduate students are struggling according to the Institutes of Higher Education uh, State of Student Report back in 2022. Oh, are you not able to see this slide? <laughs> um, but how do you um, how do you engage our graduate students in our classes? Well, the that's a million dollar question, right? So, um, I know that engagement is always an issue, whether or not it is face to face a hybrid, high flex, or online, one of the biggest issue that we're facing in higher education is, are they really engaged or are they just going through uh, our classes? One of the things that we can do is, of course, talk about the real world applications. There's high impact educational practices, as well as making sure that we are engaged in active learning. Um, one of the things that we also focus on is not just delivering the content or um, information to our students, we also want to create that social cohesion and building that community when we're with them in classrooms and as well as in the programs. So um, hypothesis. So I know the conference um, theme and everything is about hypothesis. And how did we as a university at University of Incarnate Word adopt hypothesis? So the history behind it was one of the faculty members had a really great experience using the hypothesis. So what happened was back in 20. 23 January, we decided to pilot test. So I was one of the beta testers who came in and said, hey, I love trying out different tools. Um, I'm happy to try it out. So uh, for a group of us decided that we're going to incorporate them in undergraduate, for me, graduate courses in various different classes. And then we were able to gather feedback and we officially adopted hypothesis in that fall semester of um, 2023. So um, Evelyn couldn't be here today because of extenuating circumstances, but I am going to provide you the in 
instructional designer point of view. So basically um, the Canvas set setup, we use LMS or learning management system Canvas at our university. The setup was very, very easy. There's no preferred browser. Uh, tech support was great in terms of instructional and faculty point of view. And the purpose was to just engage the students, right? And the faculty members to use this new tool to uh, be more innovative as well as to make things easier. So you're not just looking at um, just you know content, but how do you engage with that content and then have a really good experience? And as you know, if you've been in academia for a long time, I've been teaching for about 25 years in higher education, it's hard to acquire new tools. Um, but I have to say from a faculty perspective, it was really easy to incorporate it into my classes. So I teach the fun classes, advanced statistics, research method, epidemiology, biostatistics, and it goes on. Um, how do you make those subjects fun, right? So hypothesis made things really interactive because um, you can comment on it as you um, will show you some examples, allow students to annotate um, and be able to see everything. And it fosters a deeper understanding because when you see other people's feedback, not just the feedback coming from the faculty, when you see a collective feedback from everyone, a lot of times there's a theme that emerges and it enhances comprehension and retention as well. Um, so what I've noticed in the courses it was the fact that it actively interacted with the contents. We had peer-to-peer -peer learning because it was so evident that everyone was giving similar feedback. Um, and you'll hear from um, my students what happened. And it provided guidance and also further insight into the text. Uh, or any of the content that we're using. And for uh, today, what we're going to be talking about is all my students are graduate students, uh, doctoral. So they were working on their perspectives and we were able to go back and forth in terms of not just the surface level, but deeper level in terms of some of the areas that we had to focus on. Um, so hypothesis in action. I think as a faculty member, you're wondering, how do I use it? Is it easy to integrate? So this is the hypothesis in action. And this is one of the papers of uh, one of the students who are going to, you're going to hear from, Rick. And you can see, I know it's a little bit blurry, but the annotations that you see, um, it's from me and also the faculty members. And it's really, really easy to see where the, problems or where the student is doing well. And uh, we're able to comment on any of the aspects of the paper going back and forth. And also in terms of for faculty, of course, like how do you grade it? And this is a grade book in Canvas, so learning management system. And when you open it up and set it up on Canvas, it shows up all the feedback uh, that the student and others have noted. And you can go into it and give feedback if you're grading this assignment based on their peer reviews and it goes right into the grade book. So it was easy peasy. Like I said, the learning curve wasn't so steep and it was really easy for me to utilize for the last 18 months um, in various different classes. So I know a lot of times um, we like to hear from actual students because I know a lot of the faculty members talk about you know, what their experiences are. But I think one of the issues or things that we want to hear is more from the students, meaning we want to find out how did they find this new tool? Because it's another thing that we're asking them to do. And um, I wanted to make sure that you heard from all our voices in terms of our experiences in the hypothesis use of it. So it's, I'm going to introduce uh, first um, Rick. He's going to talk about um, his use of hypothesis, then Philip 
uh, will be next, and then David. So Rick, Philip, and David, they are doctoral students. And also what's unique about those three students is the fact that they are veterans. Um, they're retired um, military who are enrolled in our program. Jackie is the next student who's going to talk about her experience with the hypothesis. Um, she's an international student who's in our doctoral program. And you'll hear her perspective of use of the hypothesis. And then Susanna, um, she's our domestic student who has gone through our program pretty quickly um, and has been with UIW since undergrad. And you'll hear her perspective of um, also utilizing this as well as um, how she also uses it with her undergrad. So let me introduce you to Rick and he's going to tell you a little bit more about his experience using the hypothesis. Thank you, Dr. Love. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, so again, uh, my name is uh, Rick Rosales, and what I enjoyed about uh, using the hypothesis tool is uh, enabled me to look at uh, not only my early drafts, but my peer early uh, peers' early drafts and see the improvement that uh, we were able to accomplish throughout the semester. And so and it, it was almost a real, real time as, as uh, you entered a you know, a correction or uh, you made a comment on someone, you could see it, they could respond to it. I really like that aspect of uh, hypothesis. Additionally, it, it allowed me to look at how I was communicating and in my writing, was I conveying the information, the data as I intended it, while reflecting on the feedback I was, I was receiving. So if uh, multiple classmates uh, question a certain part or, or Dr. Love asked, what exactly did you mean here? Then that lets me know, hey, I need to do a better job conveying on uh, the information that I have. So I really enjoy that. And then also it allows you to look at your work critically, uh, listen to not only uh, positive feedback, but also uh, critical feedback and vice versa with your classmates. And lastly, I know some of my other classmates will touch on this. I just want to say on Fostering collaboration really allows for uh, the classroom and your classmates to grow together as, as you develop your writing and you hone in on your scholarly uh, writing skills. And with that, I will pass uh, over to uh, Philip. Hey, thank you, Rick. Thank you, Dr. Love. Um, I'm glad I'm here today and able to present and share this um, awesome platform. Again, for me, the you know three aspects were you know reviewing my peers' work and gaining knowledge from what they're writing. Um, we all learn at different, even though we may be enrolled in the same courses, you know, the classes for a degree program. However, we may learn at a different level, a different pace from others as well. So, and I think this is really helps helps help, really helped me out to where I saw where they're at. Ah, you know, I never caught that before, and so reviewing their work helped me when I was working on my own paper. And then gaining the rich feedback from my peers um, who are also essentially learning the same process that I am, but in particular for our prospectus. And again, recognizing their skill level and be able to adapt what they know and all their knowledge into, what, into the work that I was accomplishing. Um, again, you know, not only learning from the professor, um, Dr. Love in the, in the course, and all the previous professors, but it's also in the, you know collaborative of being able to learn along with my peers, and again, again them influencing me. And it, it, of course, in the military, we're used to doing group work, teamwork, and I think this really uh, solidifies that type of culture and that type of environment for this use, utilizing this platform. And also, again, bringing us together, it really brought us. Together because we don't always get to attend the same classes together, even though in passing, you know, we know each other. But this socially, I think, really brought us all together and built a really dynamic team helping each other out. And I see this really being beneficial for other universities, other colleges, um, utilizing this in their platform as well. Thank you.
All right. Um, thank you, Philip, uh, Dr. Love. Uh, it's awesome to be here today, uh, and, and I'm having a great time just watching and learning from everybody. Um, so oh, for my interaction with Hapatitis, I had two two uh, key things that I want to talk about. One, um, because we are in our program so far into it, to adapt a new program like Hypothesis is something that most students would be like, man, I don't want to do this because it's just a new program I have to learn um, and everything. But when we really sat down and started working with it, um, the program was very intuitive. Um, it, there wasn't a large learning curve because um, like I said, it was intuitive. So as soon as you started clicking on it, it's like, oh, it, that's easy. Just click on here and, and it sends you to a little prompt that you know allows you to make a comment. And like my cohorts were saying is that once you saw the comments, like, oh, it's right there, feedback, click. And so the program was was a lot easier and manageable to do, especially again, because our time is precious being being in the hello, can you still hear me? Okay. Um, being in the program, you we don't have a lot of time to like be able to sit there and um actually learn a new program while we're actually doing our perspective. So this um and the feasibility of a hypothesis was like almost like second nature once we got into it. Um, but yeah, that, that was it from my perspective, the two things that I learned from the program or that I wanted to bring up about the program. Um, with this, I think Suzanne is next. No, Jackie's next. Hello, good evening everyone and thank you. Um, for me, I will share my perspective. I think as an international student, a second language can be very, a, a little bit overwhelming. So this tool actually allowed me to better understand the feedback that I, that was received. It also enhanced the connection between my peers, improving the quality of my work because it was just very, very easy to navigate the document back and forth. And it improved a lot of the editing experience. I'm very used to um, get feedback, but sometimes in the documents can be very confusing or other using other type, types of tools. I have never had a similar experience than I did with hypothesis. So um, I can just say that based on what my classmates have already shared as well, um, I believe that what made it more interesting is just the engagement that we kept between all of us. So that was very I think that made a strong difference. So thank you very much. And with that, I'm going to go ahead with Susan. Thank you. And so uh, just to wrap up, like from at least from the student perspective. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to mention was that um, using an application like um, Hypotheses really challenges and encourages us as students to become willing and vulnerable with sharing feedback and exchanging ideas. Sometimes as scholars, it's not uncommon for us to experience imposter syndrome by learning um, or by leaning into our culture and community uh, that we and we can overcome this. And so the reasons that I mentioned this specifically, both of these ideas is because we were fortunate enough to not only be a small uh, group that was working together, um, but we all had either had a class uh, previously together or also um, just had experiences that we had shared along the way. And so we were able to really um, encourage each other um, and also encourage ourselves through this um, particular application as well. So as you heard from um, the five students and myself um, as a faculty member, um, as well as the instructor, um, instructional designer point of view, um, hypothesis, like I said, was really easy to use. Like I've been using it for about 18 months. I was a little hesitant to uh, introduce it to my five doctoral students who were at the end of their coursework. Um, initially, I was like, oh no, but as you heard, the once um, we were able to embrace uh, you know, using it, it was, like I said, the learning curve was easy. We didn't have any kind of issues with it that um, like Rick, Philip, David, um, Jackie and Susanna have mentioned, it really allowed us to 
look at all our feedbacks and be able to share as much as we can. Because a lot of times when we are in classes, we're giving feedback one-on-one -on -one to all the students. And especially on the graduate level, it's really important to be able to uh, develop that skill set to critically look at your paper, but also be willing to accept those um, critical feedback and not take it so personally. So um, hypothesis allowed the students to realize it wasn't just my feedback. Everyone was saying similar things on certain things. And then depending on the different perspective, as you could see, we have a very diverse group of students here is where they're coming from and what they're emphasizing. So it allowed the students to engage more and also ask what the feedback actually meant. And then we were able to engage in the feedback and the feedback <laughs> to figure out what we actually meant. So it really made all everyone's papers a lot better and also uh, realized that everyone um, has um, a lot of insight to offer and can contribute to a lot of scholarly work. Just because you're in a graduate student, it doesn't mean that um, you can't give critical feedback per se. You were able to exchange really meaningful information um, in this way that was documented and then we can go back. Another thing that we were looking at the time to make sure there's enough um, time for question and answers um, is the fact that we wanted to make sure that we had different versions of the perspective. So in the beginning of the semester, all the five students here had their rough, rough draft. Uh, so if all of us can remember, I think writing, academic writing is one of the hardest thing that we can master. And to uh, put it out there, sometimes it's really, really um, difficult. And the students were able to see the first draft of the feedback that we had. And then mid-semester, we see the improvement from um, that first point to the second point and third point. So from a researcher's point of view, not only it's not just the final grade, but you're able to visually see uh, how well they have progressed and what they pivoted and changed to make the document a lot better. So, um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is actually open up, like I said, we want it to be an interactive uh, session. So if I believe all the questions are being placed in the chat, and then here's our contact information. Um, if you have any questions, yes, um, I we're more than happy to share our slides. Initially, I thought you couldn't see the slide. <laughs> and so, yeah, so go ahead. If there's any questions uh, for us, uh, we am, we're available to answer them. Go ahead. Dr. Love, there is one question in um, which David answered um, from the student's perspective, but I thought it might be good to hear your perspective. Um, the question is, uh, first, I wanted to say thank you so much for the information. It was great to hear from the students, but did you have to change any of your workflows or assignments to use Hypothesis? Uh, no, basically it was um, a couple of different steps that you had to, um, meaning did it take, was it a little bit more time intensive? So I had bigger classes sometimes, meaning that uh, you have to upload the document as PDF files as opposed to the Word document. Therefore, that took, there's some administrative things, but it wasn't that difficult. In terms of changing my assignments, not it was one of those things where you can go to the website and ask them to annotate. So it was just one more step. So it didn't add too much to my time. But when I initially started as a beta tester, so when I was in the pilot group, um, I had to kind of figure out what do I need to do? Where does where do the documents have to live in Canvas or LMS? Um, 
And those were some of the things that I worked with the instructional designer to ensure that I understood what I needed to do. But in terms of time commitment, I do use a lot of ed technology in all my classes. Some of my students, they had me in other classes besides this one, um, is like Flipgrid, Edpuzzle, like you name it, um, Padlet. I use a lot of it in my classes to engage my students um, in various different modalities, but this one probably in, on the scale from one to five in terms of learning it was just very, very easy that it just uploading everything was right. It was integrated uh, really well, and there was not many things I needed to do. And what I feel sometimes is also the students and the students all from the 18 months of using it had similar feedback. Um, so meaning that it was really easy to use um, in terms of, I just have to show them and then they were able to do the feedback. So yes. That's great. Uh, one other question. Um, so it's a two-part question. Uh, do you use uh, do you um, use annotations participation for course evaluation? And in larger classes over a hundred, what percent of students do not participate? Ah, no. Good question. The thing with me is um, I used to teach undergrad with students over 200 and um, I, but that was before hypothesis came into play. So um, I would probably surmise if you're using it in a classroom over 100, you probably need a TA and breakout sessions, uh, just because I think it's more manageable when you put them into pods or groups, probably no more than five or six, uh, like focus groups, five to seven, and then have them work through some of the assignments. Uh, in terms of participation for the hypothesis, believe it or not, even the ones who kind of hesitated in the beginning, um, I usually had 100% um, participation because I start out really small, meaning I asked them to read an article or for this particular class, the students had to work on their perspectives for their dissertation. So we were like plunging in right away. But for most of my classes, I start off really small with a small article and then um, I'm able to get them to see the value of using it and then move it into a bigger assignment. So it's been, it's been very, like I said, it was, it's been a, a really wonderful surprise just because all the students have, uh, have mentioned how much of a uh, interaction, cohesion, what all the students uh, today are mentioning, uh, meaning even when they're busy, like because all of them are busy professionals, they're not only full-time um, students, but they also have <laughs> various different professions as well. And they're in there, especially David, he is such a great editor, he's going in there and then you could see where people's strengths are when they give feedback. So yeah, great questions. In terms of evaluation, um, annotate participating for a course evaluation. Uh, for our overall course evaluation, I don't think there is um, Rick, David, I don't think that's one of the questions that come up, but I do ask all the students at the end of all my courses what they thought about using a lot of the ed uh, tech tools that I use in the class. And this is usually rated pretty high uh, just because we do write a lot. So thank you so much for that question. Great. I was just going to say to everyone, we have a few minutes left. So if you've got a last minute question, please go ahead and put that in um, in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, Rick has a follow up question here. Are you grading students based on quality or quantity of participation? That's a really good question. For me, I am. Um, so I do. That's a really great question. Um, basically, what I do is. I ask students to at least post two comments, meaning making sure that there is a minimum, right? Um, and then from there, I look at their quality, meaning um, we first do a round of feedback because you realize sometimes your instructions about a feedback is very vague. To you, it might be very, very clear. So the first round, usually we 
I just tell the students, make sure you have at least two comments for you know all the students who are participating. And then, um, and then figure out what their feedback is. So I give them examples of, you know, you can give a feedback on the format, you can give a feedback on the questions, research questions that they're proposing, their methodology, their literature review, um, whatever that, or limitations, questions. So we go, we start off there and then Afterwards, uh, in terms of, like I said, this is all these students are at the end of their coursework for their uh, doctoral program. So meaning their feedback is usually very high quality because by then they are trained to kind of give better quality um, information. So um, we go back and kind of talk about which what feedback has come up. And then if people are not giving enough feedback, that's when you come back and then talk to the student. So in terms of grading, it's not a hard grading. It's one of those things where the goal is to be able to give good constructive as well as positive feedback to your peers, but also be engaged in it. So the students are not pressured to be like, oh my gosh, I have to give like a very thoughtful or thought provoking feedback. I also give feedback and show what it could be. Uh, so do the whole modeling, giving feedback, um, on feedback, and then also uh, guiding them through um, uh, the process. So that's great. Wonderful question. Any other questions? I'll give it one more second so people have time to type. Um, I actually have a, a question, Dr. Love. Um, as you're evolving the, the class and, and you know, you, you just started to really use hypothesis, you know, how do you see yourself, um, you know, evolving with social annotation, you know, going forward? Are there things that you're, you're oh, I want to tweak this, I want to tweak that, or, you know, I'm, I'm going to incorporate this aspect? <sighs> Yeah, no, um, I just discovered the hypothesis. You can also note, um, make annotations on videos. So what I do in some of the other classes is I use Edpuzzle, Flipgrid, and um, some of the video types of content. Um, and uh, basically like with the uh, tech tools where you're using the video and kind of answering the question just faculty and student, we could do a social annotation of videos and also various different aspects of it to kind of talk about um, ways that we learn differently. Because what Jackie mentioned, um, she said she's an international student. So sometimes visually hearing it and different types of uh, giving the content is really helpful, not only for international students like myself, I have to see it visually, I have to hear it, I have to touch it. So, um, and multi multiple ways of delivering, especially hard concepts. When I teach statistics, there's a lot of assumptions. So how do you deliver that dry content in multiple ways and get feedback immediately is uh, what I like about it. And then it kind of creates that um, social cohesion that all the students were talking about in terms of um, they show their work and their feedback also shows like the type of questions uh, that they're asking that they're not either understanding the concept or um, so let me give you an example for instance so um, this is the first time that I've used it at the end of the course usually I like to use it in the introductory courses in the beginning when the students are entering into our graduate programs to get them used to kind of using various different things especially like APA 7th edition if you have never used um, APA 7th edition it's really difficult to learn sometimes if you haven't done academic writing or people who are coming into graduate school, like not being in school for 20 years and then coming back and trying to learn this new system. And it's been really, really helpful. But what I learned in this semester with this group of students is the fact that at the, especially at the end, looking at your culminating projects or the prospectus or the dissertation proposal, you could really see the progression and that, um, 
cohesion that you saw with the student where they felt like, wow, you know, am I saying this correctly? And it's, they're not just hearing it from me in terms of like, let's talk about your research questions. So I think we went through multiple iterations of research questions and your methodology. And it just gave really great perspective, not only hearing it from me, but all their classmates on looking at various different areas. So I, I'm just really excited because I think I'm going to be using it for um, actual dissertations as well and create that culture of um, not being alone. I know those of you who have doctoral degrees, for example, if you remember back writing your dissertation, it's a very lonely process. And I hope to probably use this as uh, a tool for our students to get together and be able to help each other kind of edit and ask some questions before the proposal defense or dissertation defense um, to get some ideas and feedback from others. So I'm quite excited just because um, I, like I said, every semester the, over the 18 months, I've gotten such positive feedback from the students. So it's a really great tool to use. Wonderful, I think, let's see, we've got one more. Um question. Um, yeah, so um, if you were going to give an instructor one tip to start diving into social annotation, what would that be? Uh, one tip, have an open mind. Um, like I said, even if the students are like, oh no, Dr. Love, another tool. <laughs> Do not listen to them. Like um, what you heard from Rick, uh, Philip, uh, David, Jackie, and uh, Susanna. Uh, initially, like I said, um, I don't know, Dr. Love, really? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and, then, um, and they really had a great time. And I am very blessed just because um, we have some really great motivated students that you see here in terms of they're going to change the world and help us to kind of communicate all the research that they're doing. So the instructor, it, it's an easy tool to use. Do not listen to the naysayers at that point. It just, I think it's really important. The pandemic um, has taught us, I'm a public health professional, epidemiologist, and what has taught us is that we can't be alone. We need, to, we need that social cohesion. We need that communication and connection. And however we can create it, especially in our busy lives, if we can inc incorporate it in our courses to kind of work together collaboratively as opposed to having that scarcity mindset. Oh my gosh, you got an A. I'm not going to share what the professor mentioned to me. You know, I don't like that culture. And I think this open source, open social cohesion, social annotation helps us to be like, hey, um, together we build capacity, we can do more. So um, I highly recommend kind of using this kind of tool to create the culture that you need and want and that sharing culture, the collaborative culture that we are hoping to have. And like what Philip, David and uh, Rick mentioned, the military culture does that. And we like to make sure <laughs> we pass it forward and kind of get out of that individualistic kind of mindset of like everyone can succeed together if we can. And so, no, that's a great question. Well, Dr. Love, we are um, coming to the end of our time together. I want to thank you and I want to thank all the, the graduate students. Thank you so much um, for participating with us today. It was a wonderful session and thanks to all the attendees. Just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, our next session will start at 1.30. So if you go back to the sessions tab, you'll be able to choose the next session. We also have two expo booths um, that are set up. So please feel free to go there. We have one if, um, if you are a current um, hypothesis customer and want to chat with our support team, you can go to that expo. And then we also have one if you're um, currently um, not a subscriber, not a customer, um, please join uh, that, that, uh, that booth and you can get some questions answered. So um, we are so excited you're all here today and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you.